historical, historical and religious significance, but the only people who get to see it are American troops. Countries all over the world have took an overwhelming interest in Middle Eastern states. In particular, Iraq has been the place of constant power struggles. Why is that? Some people may be surprised to learn that Iraq was the center of the world for thousands of years. The city of Ur was the very first true city of the world and was central to ancient activity, much like New York City is today. Ur is recorded in written history dating back 6,500 years BC and is even in the Torah, Old Testament. They made many advances, including mass and astronomy, to name a few, and they may have even made alien contact. We know that sounds crazy, guys, but what if it were true? What if we were to tell you that the power struggles in the region surrounding modern-day Iraq is the direct result of the search for ancient technology? What if we were to tell you that a Stargate portal was discovered there in the 1920s, and for almost 100 years, the search has been on for technology that could change the course of human history? Just wait till you guys hear this. In 2003, in direct response to the attacks in New York City, American and British troops invaded Iraq. Within weeks, the two armies crushed the Iraqi army. Mission complete, right? So why did the United States Army stay for over 10 years after liberating the country? Recently, we came across information that strongly suggests that there was a secret objective to the occupation. We are, of course, referring to the oldest known Stargate on planet Earth that we know of. At the site of the Great Ziggurat, a British explorer discovered something in the 1920s that is so unbelievable that you could be forgiven for thinking J.K. Rowling dreamed it up. During the 1980s, Saddam Hussein fortified the ancient complex in an apparent attempt to keep out investigators from seeing what was hidden within the complex for thousands of years. Strangely, Hussein put an air force base at this location and even developed chemical weapons here. He was clearly trying to keep this ancient place heavily guarded. The three huge staircases you see in the images were put here under Saddam Hussein's orders. They were to take huge ancient objects out of the Great Ziggurat, but did he succeed? The theory that we are suggesting is that Saddam Hussein got his hands on super weapons from a forgotten age, which resulted on a preemptive strike from the US and her allies. But why did he not use the technology? Maybe it was undecipherable. Maybe it was alien language. Maybe cuneiform is in fact an alien language. Imagine this scenario. The US government obtains intelligence that hidden somewhere in central Iraq is an actual Stargate, placed there by the Anunnaki gods of ancient Samaria aka the aliens. In this scenario, when Nibiru, the hidden planet in our solar system, is closest to Earth, the Anunnaki will take the opportunity to travel to the Earth through this Stargate and will set up their base in Iraq and share knowledge with people of the region. The idea that the Anunnaki were not gods but extraterrestrials that came and bestowed technology upon the Sumerians is fascinating. This tech is what made their society so advanced. Could modern Iraq be bracing itself for the same fate, hence the overwhelming agenda? Essentially, more and more people are coming forward saying that they have been involved in these classified programs where these technologies are used quite regularly and that they are found all over the planet. Iraq is just one other place that they are found. The strongest available evidence for an historical ET presence in Iraq comes from cuneiform tablets directly recording the beliefs and activities of the ancient Sumerians whose civilization began almost overnight. Most of these cuneiform tablets relate to stories of the Sumerians interacting with their gods. Most archaeologists initially accepted that these were merely myths and attached little importance to them other than giving insight into the mytho-religious beliefs of the ancient Sumerians. That viewpoint received a major challenge in 1976 when the Sumerian scholar Zachariah Sitchin published the first of a series of books on his translations of thousands of Sumerian tablets. Rather than treating the stories of the gods as myths that had little verifiable relevance, Sitchin's interpreted the tablets as literal descriptions of events as they occurred in the time. These modern viewpoints are emerging from the ashes of a world that was ruled by empires and dictatorships. Have we simply misinterpreted history for thousands of years? We told you the truth may be stranger than you would ever even consider believing. What does that tell you? What do you think of the Stargate portal at the, the Ziggurat of Ur in Iraq? The signs are everywhere. The writing is on the wall. Thanks for watching. In 1922, the British explorer Woolley was sent to Iraq to explore the ancient city of Ur for artifacts. But legend has it that what Woolley found was not just an ancient city, but an entire ancient complex. 
possibly housing a Stargate. It's one of Iraq's most famous archaeological sites, rising from the desert near Nasiriya in the southeast. The Ziggurat of Ur, a massive 4,000-year-old temple pyramid, and the surrounding ruins of an ancient Sumerian city. The ziggurat was almost completely off limits to the public under Saddam's regime. Back then, tour guide Daif Masen didn't get much business. During the time of Saddam, he made the tourists difficult to come to for Iraq. He put a checkpoint and putting Iraqi soldiers in it. Uh, when they came here, also not a picture here and not a picture there. The only regular tourists now are busloads of U.S. soldiers from nearby Camp Adder on a sightseeing excursion they'll never forget. I heard about in uh, college classes, but I never thought I'd get to actually be on the ziggurat at her. I'm actually um, in school to be a history teacher. I'm a senior in college right now, so this means everything to me um, to be able to show my students for the next 30 years. In the shadow of the ziggurat lies a place that some consider even more significant. This is believed to be the home of the prophet Abraham, a central figure in three major religions. Muslims, Jews, and Christians all claim Abraham as their patriarch. I was raised in, in a Christian home, and so I studied Abraham for many years. To, so to be in the place that he walked and to be able to touch the walls of the place that is purported to be his home is just a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity for me. A U.N. report accuses U.S. troops of badly damaging ancient ruins in Babylon during the 2003 invasion. But the U.S. is widely credited with preserving and protecting the ziggurat. American advisors are trying to help the Iraqi government excavate the site and open it to the public. Still, infrastructure and security will have to improve before the area becomes a viable destination for Western tourists. No, it won't be accessible to anyone, probably, of us anytime soon. But to Middle Eastern people and North African people, and yes, absolutely yes. And someday, Iraqis hope to share this archaeological treasure with the entire world. Uh, this is for Iraq, for uh, America, uh, all the countries in the world, because this civilization, the, always the civilization for all the world, or the holy place is not for one.